Good afternoon or good morning. Uh, welcome to this webinar uh, on Gleam I, the Global Livestock Environmental Assessment Model Interactive. I am uh, Anne Motte, Livestock Policy Officer with the Animal Production and Health Division of the FAO based in Rome. And uh, this is uh, an introduction to, uh, to the tool, uh, an interactive tool to assess greenhouse gas emissions and mitigation potential in the livestock sector. You have on this first slide uh, the link to uh, go to the web page of the model and download uh, the tool. Uh, the Animal Production and Health Division of FAO provides support to countries uh, for developing sustainable livestock policies. Uh, you have here a non-exhaustive list of uh, people involved uh, within FAO and also partners in, in this effort. Uh, an effort that is uh, organized uh, around three main areas of activities. Uh, the first one being the production of disaggregated assessments, uh, assessments of uh, livestock production, impact on the environment, uh, impact on the livestock sector, and so on. The second area of activities is around uh, economic analysis, for example, the production on mitigation abatement cost curves, uh, and the third one is to engage uh, with the stakeholders of the sector uh, in initiatives on methods, but also on policy dialogue about practice change. Uh, and I'm referring here to the Global Agenda for Sustainable Livestock and the LEAP Partnership. Just before we start, uh, this is uh, what is reported uh, to by IPCC in the last assessment report. Uh, about the trend in uh, AFOLU emissions, agriculture, forestry, and other land use, uh, where we can see that uh, emissions uh, that are usually associated with livestock production, such as manure management or enteric fermentation, represent a significant part of the total part of the total emissions, uh, for which countries need support for the, to, to to report uh, to UNFCCC, and this is uh, very much what we are trying to address here today. So GLEAM, uh, the Global Livestock Environmental Assessment Model, uh, is a GIS tool that was initially developed to improve our understanding of greenhouse gas emissions in livestock supply chains, uh, and that is currently extended to other environmental impacts or natural resource use efficiency assessments, uh, for example, feed use, land use, nitrogen, and so on. It is based on the life cycle assessment approach, uh, looking at all steps of production, all major sources of emissions, from the production of feed crops or forages, uh, the use of fertilizers, for example, all the way to the process and transport of animal products uh, through the different stages of production on farm, including manure management and enteric fermentation. It computes livestock production and IPCC tier 2 emissions at local level. Uh, and since it's a GIS environment, local level means a pixel, a cell on the map. Uh, which means we can generate averages and different ranges of aggregates at different scales. For example, we can look at um, aggregated emission at regional level uh, or uh, emission intensities uh, in different uh, supply chains, different species and so on. It allows for scenario analysis and the assessment of mitigation options. Uh, and this is a very important feature uh, that we are going to present today. And it was developed at FAO with a number of external partners. So what do we know about uh, IPCC requirements for Tier 2 uh, emissions in livestock production? The first very important thing is that uh, we need to disaggregate uh, the animal population into different cohorts uh, based on the type of animal, their weight, their face in the production cycle, and so on. But this data is not available from uh, national statistics. Uh, so what GLEAM does here is it provides support uh, through a modeling approach of uh, these cohorts, six different cohorts. You have the example here for cattle. Um, using key production parameters such as mortality, fertility, growth rates, replacement rates, uh, ages, and so on. What do we know about IPCC tier 2 emissions when it comes to the energy requirement of each cohort? Uh, we need to look at the gross energy requirement uh, as uh, the sum of uh, energy for maintenance, for lactation and pregnancy, for animal activity, 
weights, gains in, in production, for example, of milk. All this uh, is uh, very well described in the, the equations that are reported on this slide. So this is what uh, GLIM uses to calculate tier 2 emissions for the energy requirements, uh, sorry, for, for the tier 2 energy requirements for each cohort. Um, and then GLIM calculates the feed intake uh, based on what's available in terms of, of uh, feed baskets uh, to match this energy requirement, uh, therefore calculating total feed emissions and also land use. What do we need for uh, enteric fermentation uh, emissions uh, when it comes to tier 2? Uh, we need specific enteric methane conversion factors or YMs to the different cohorts at the different uh, feed baskets that were calculated instead of using uh, default YMs provided by tier 1 IPCC uh, equations. And finally, uh, the same applies for emissions uh, from manure management, whether they are entry, sorry, they are uh, methane emissions or nitrous oxide emissions. Uh, tier two level of calculation uh, requires the use of specific uh, emission factors, for example, the volatile solids uh, conversion uh, and and uh, the rate of conversion of uh, extracted ex sorry ex treated uh, nitrogen to N2O, all this uh, being calculated also in, in GLIM as uh, a support to non-existing default emission factors. So um, what GLIM produces, and uh, this was presented in, uh, in the last webinar uh, two years ago uh, in the results from the report Tackling Climate Change to Livestock. Uh, is that there is a, wide, a really wide uh, range of emission intensities within systems and within species. Uh, for example, if you look at this slide, uh, beef production ranges from 100 to more than 400 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of protein. And this diversity uh, represents, of course, a challenge for reporting emissions, for calculating emissions, as we, as we, we saw uh, with all the tier two equations and, and, the, and the information uh, that is needed to to uh, produce tier two uh, assessments, but it's also an opportunity for mitigation. For example, in, in, this, uh, in this report tackling climate change to livestock, uh, we estimated that uh, the sector could cut down on its emissions by 30% using already available technologies and practices uh, without changing the level of production or even increasing the level of production. And you have here the breakdown of this mitigation potential uh, in different species. So, um, how do we uh, actually account for this diversity? Well, we have here an example of uh, the average feed digestibility for dairy cattle computed in GLIM, uh, and we know that feed digestibility is one of the main driver uh, of enteric uh, methane emissions. Uh, so, through uh, the, 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 the modeling of animal cohorts, but also uh, diversity of feed rations uh, and, and feed components and so on, and the energy requirements, then we end up uh, with a diversity of feed rations and feed digestibility. Same thing for methane conversion factors here for dairy cattle. You can see the, the very wide range of, uh, of methane conversion factors uh, at global level. So what is uh, GLEAM used for at the moment? Um, well, of course, it is used, as I said, for the calculation of emissions from livestock supply chains at different levels, national, regional, global, uh, by species, by type of production system, uh, grazing, mixed, industrial, uh, backyards, and so on. Uh, it is also used uh, for the ex-ante assessments of technical uh, interventions in livestock, for example, uh, what is the impact of uh, vaccination campaigns? What is the impact of improving feed quality uh, in a region, in a country, in terms of productivity in livestock, but also of greenhouse gas emissions? Uh, it is supported for, uh, it is uh, also used for supporting the design of NAMAS, nationally appropriate mitigation actions. For example, in Kenya at the moment, there is um, there is a, a NAMA being prepared on dairy production that is uh, based for the quantification part uh, on, on, on the GLIM model. It is also used to support the formulation of investment proposals of climate smart agriculture 
in a number of countries, Ecuador, uh, Niger, Zambia, Malawi, where it will also support the formulation of a Green Climate Fund proposal. And it is also used uh, for cost-benefit assessments of mitigation options. And I already mentioned the mitigation of abatement cost curves, uh, which in this case would be spatially explicit and not relying on country averages. So what, what are we doing today? We are presenting GLIMI, which is the interactive uh, version of GLIM. Uh, the full model GLIM, uh, the GIS model, is based in, in, in Rome, uh, and we are using it in a number of projects, as I said, with partners. But we also wanted a publicly available and user-friendly version of it, a uh, light version of it, let's say, uh, in an Excel file that would be downloadable uh, for practitioners, for uh, governments, project planners, or civil society organizations uh, that uh, could use uh, this tool for the preparation of national inventories uh, and also ex ante evaluation of projects uh, with intervention in the livestock sectors. In the livestock sector, so this is a tool that is uh, that aims to support uh, a very wide range of practitioners, of stakeholders of the sector uh, for uh, national inventories and uh, project planning as well. So thank you very much. Now uh, we are going to look at the actual demonstration of the tool and I'm looking forward to hearing your questions. <laughs> 